So some subtleties here. Number one is it is it is possible to go through this and yet still maintain a relationship. So we can still we can still be tied to the Democratic Party and not tied to the candidate, or we could be tied to a candidate. I mean, Bernie's not even a Democrat, although now he's 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 stepped into the party in those places where he has to to be on the ballot. And 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 still have a commitment, you know, to to the other. I, it's, it's 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 almost like, you know, again, this it's an, it, the the love in politics is an imperfect analogy. I, I I'll acknowledge that right up front. In in turn in a hundred percent world, but in a seventy or eighty percent world, I think it's a damn good analogy. And. So, number one. Number two, uh, Shano made this point to me during the break. He said, uh, could it be that a lot of people who don't, who initially or reflexively didn't didn't like Hillary Clinton, didn't like so because they felt that it was a prearranged marriage being forced on them? Which raises a really interesting question, because prearranged marriages in many parts of the world actually have a higher rate of long-term success than do falling-in-love marriages, which is a whole other topic that we've done shows on. And and I didn't even believe until I, I, you know, read the books and saw the stats on it. And then finally, the you know, the big the big challenge in a relationship that is. In which one of the couples is uncoupling. And by the way, the uncoupling doesn't have to be from the entire relationship. It can be from just one dimension of the relationship in, in talking in relationships. People could uncouple, say, for example, physically or sexually, and still be, and still be coupled as friends or as as partners or what you know whatever. Or people can uncouple as friends. They start, you know, but but still be romantic. Or what? I, you know, well, I'm it's it, I'm 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 pushing the metaphor to the to the boundaries here. I'll, I'll stop at that point. But my point about the amnesia is that in an uncoupling relationship, the amnesia about whatever part of the relationship that's falling apart becomes very, very serious. I mean, it's like people literally can't remember the good times. And is Bernie the spark that has caused us to remember that the Democratic Party brought us and the Republican Party opposed Social Security, Medicare, the Peace Corps, unemployment insurance, civil rights, student grant and loan programs, safety laws, uh, occupational safety laws, environmental laws, prevailing wage laws, the right to collective bargaining, paid medical insurance, paid vacations, pensions, workers' compensation, the Marshall Plan, flood disaster insurance, school lunch programs, public schools for that matter, women's rights, the Fair Standard, Standard Labor Standards Act, the minimum wage, child labor laws, the 40-hour work week, the weekends, Democrats brought us weekends, USDA programs, FHA, the Farmer Home Administration, this is back when the banks refused to lo- make uh, rural loans because uh, they didn't want the bother. Um, uh, uh, flood control, rural water districts, rural electricity. I mean, all this stuff. Could it be that Bernie is breaking that amnesia? And is there something like that happening over on the right, too? That's a very interesting one. Uh, or is, uh, is it that what's going on on the right that, well, uh, let's uh, Quentin in uh, Palestine, Texas, you had some thoughts on this and you wanted to relate it to the Republican Party and the Tea Party. Do I have that right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it appears to be, we have a case study there that uh, during the 2008 uh, uh, election campaign, before Obama was even elected, under George Bush's administration, the first Tea Party rallies were held, and they were um, rallying against the bailouts to the banks. Right. But their silent scream had previously occurred. They were upset over the deficit spending on the war and the war in and of itself. So there was a cry unheard within the Republican Party that that turned into the Tea Party, that turned into the spurned lovers, as it were. And then they and then they recoupled because the Republican Party reminded the Tea Party that they both have this common uh, connection of you know immigrants, minorities, liberals, communists. We hate them together, so we get back together. Right. They managed to succeed in that. Yeah, I think you're Hillary absolutely right, Quinn. Same thing now with her populism. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Reconnect. So, so uh, then my uh, is okay. So my metaphor is making sense. That's that's fascinating. Thank you very much, Quentin. Great to hear from you.